Hello everybody, welcome to this wonderful event. I'm Jeanette Perkins and welcome to the National Awards for Disability Leadership. I'll be your MC today. I'm an autistic author and advocate and yes, I'm wearing a rainbow wig and I'm also wearing a t-shirt designed by autistic artist Tim Sharp. So a big shout out to him. I'm very excited to be part of this wonderful event. We will be recognising the work of some amazing people in the disability community. Thank you so much for tuning in. These awards are devised and run by people with disability. This is the first time that we have won these awards and the first time the awards have been online. There are seven award categories and we have presenters in six locations around Australia. We have finalists in over 20 locations. Um, and we have had a huge number of nominations across all categories. People are watching this award ceremony right across Australia and even in other countries around the world via the Disability Leadership Institute YouTube channel. The live webcast is captioned. So firstly, I would like to invite Auntie Dai Kerr of the Gunnan Willembalak clan of the Wurundjeri people to do the welcome to country. I honour my ancestors and my elders and I pay homage to this sacred ground that we're on. I wish to acknowledge any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here, elders, elders of different nations. I acknowledge all of you and I pay my respects to your ancestors, elders and families. It's a privilege to be here, to be a part of your journey today and this area here is part of the traditional country of my grandmother, mother and family. And I always feel very honoured to be able to do welcomes on their behalf. I came an elder approximately 27 years ago upon the passing of my mother and I've taken her role and um, enjoy it and I take my role very seriously. My family lived along the Birurung, the Yarra River for hundreds of years before they were moved to a place called Corandirk Station, which is a mission in Healesville, in the Dandenongs, and that's where my grandmother was born. So the MCG is our traditional ceremonial area. The confluence of the Mary Creek and the Birurung are our initiation grounds. The ground between the children's hospital and the zoo the meeting the place of the Kulin nations, of which Wurundjeri is one of the five tribes. It's, um, Federation Square is a smaller meeting place, and Government House is a camping ground between the Bunurung and the Wurundjeri. I'd also like to acknowledge all of the peoples and the First Nations peoples that are watching this from around Australia. And um, you probably haven't got a clue about what I was talking about, but I hopefully you can look it up and see what's on my country. And as a person with a disability, I sometimes find that people with disabilities are people that aren't seen. And every day I'm pushed aside and pushed in front of and not spoken to. And it's like we're um, invisible. And I often wonder why, and I don't know whether people are scared of people with people with disabilities or they just don't want to know. So I fight for recognition and I always fight for us to be equal. I think it's very important for all of us to be equal. It's important that we share our stories. You know, the city of Melbourne has 150 different cultures and we're so lucky that we have that many. We're so lucky that we can sit here without fear of any harm and we don't think of that in our daily lives. 
So please share your stories so that we can live in harmony. I firmly believe if we can live in harmony, we can eradicate racism and stigma. Then we pave the way for a better place for our children, our emerging leaders. So I offer you my hand in friendship so that we can all journey together. May Bunjil, my creator, surround you all and keep you safe on country. On behalf of my elders, I say woman Jika, Woman Jerry Balak, Yemen Gundi Bik, which means welcome to the traditional country of the Wurundjeri people. I hope that you have a good day. I hope that you share stories. Congratulations to the winners and please enjoy your journey of life. Nungajan, thank you. Thank you so much to Auntie Daika. And I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Wurundjeri people, and to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging, and also to extend that respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples watching this award ceremony today. So, okay, everyone, it is time to start giving out awards. Our first category is social impact. This category recognises the use of the public domain through mainstream and social media and other digital interfaces to achieve visibility of disabled people. Our presenter for the social impact category is Graham Innes. Graham is a lawyer and company director serving on the board of a state insurance regulator, a major not-for-profit service provider and an advisory committee to the NDIA. He chairs the Attitude Foundation and was Australia's Disability Discrimination Commissioner from 2005 to 2014. And I must say, Graham himself has made a big social impact. So welcome, Graham. Unfortunately, we've been um, unable to technically get Graham up on the screen. So it's Christina here and I'll run you through the social impact finalists. Our first finalist in the social impact category is Dylan Alcott. Dylan is an esteemed sportsman and also prominent in the media as a sports commentator and music presenter. He shows young people with disability what's possible. When Dylan won the Australian Tennis Open early this year, he didn't just accept the trophy, but took the opportunity to increase awareness about disability and about the importance of young disabled people to see people like him. I need to go share screen, share computer sound. Now, during the match, we did have a, a chat to your, your father. I know uh, your parents have been an incredible support. Um, growing up with some challenges, what yeah, does your family mean in, in terms of getting you to a stage like this? Yeah, my family means everything. My, my mum and dad, Martin and Reese, stepmum Dana, my brother Zach. You know, I used to get bullied as a kid. Uh, I struggled about the fact that I was in a wheelchair, but if you ask me right now, you know, if I could have an operation and stem cell research, whatever, there's not enough money in the world you could ever pay me because my disability has given me, you know, part of my opportunity in life and I'm proud to be disabled, proud to be in a wheelchair. Um, and I'm a... On the back of that, I've, I've started my own foundation, the Dylan Alcott Foundation, to help young kids with disabilities who were embarrassed about their disabilities, just like me, you know, help them do whatever they do. And the best thing my family did was never treat them any differently. So for any other kid out there with a disability, any other family, just get out there and love your life, cool. whoever you are, because we all go through no, some stuff, true. but you know. Just absolutely beautiful words. Our second finalist in the social impact category is Jessica Walton. Jessica is a picture book author who is published in the UK, US and in Australia, and she's also been translated into nine other languages. Jess is a cancer survivor, amputee, queer, daughter of a trans parent, feminist and teacher. As well as picture books, Jess writes about disability, LGBTIQ issues and the intersections between her disabled and queer experiences. She is a sensitivity reader for manuscripts featuring amputee and queer characters and reviews published books with amputee characters. 
Jess uses social media, particularly Twitter, to talk about issues for disabled people to her over 5,000 followers and probably more now, leading discussions and regularly trending widely. Jess uses the public domain to raise awareness about disability, intersectionality and parenting. Welcome, Jess. Our third finalist in the social impact category is Tim Ferguson. Tim has been a public advocate for people with disability since he announced his multiple sclerosis in 2010. He has made a series of podcast interviews with people with disabilities aiming to improve awareness and understanding of their conditions and to highlight their achievements and employability. Recently on ABC Radio National, he described disability employment as the next wave of social cohesion. Tim co-wrote and starred in the live show and documentaries with the Doug Anthony All-Stars, Tick Fucking Talk, highlighting the challenges of living with multiple sclerosis and the difficulties faced by carers of people with disabilities. As an international touring comedian, Tim uses humour and his high profile to bring understanding about disability. someone to read this poem we're not doing this bit. yeah I know we are doing this bit because I don't I don't have long <laughs> it's a poem by W.H. Auden for my funeral stop all the clocks cut off the telephone prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone silence the piano and with muffled drum Bring out the coffin, let the mourners come. He was my north, my south, my east, my west, my working week, my Sunday rest, my moon, my midnight, my talk, my song. I thought that love would last forever. I was wrong. Let all the sandwiches be dipped in kerosene. <laughs> Set them alight, unbake all the beans. <laughs> Burn down the parliament, then run as fast as you can. And someone sent a letter of apology to the people of Japan. We're going to stand with our friends now. <laughs> the stars are not wanted now, though they were a good idea. But pack up the moon and dismantle Ikea. <laughs> Let those pricks put it back together again with an Allen key. Pour away the ocean, put the forest in the bin. Someone shoot Corey Venati, because now you can blame it on I'll Tim. hand over to him. I'll see you on the other side. You see. Okay, and we've found Graham in us, everybody. So I'm going to hand over to Graham, and Graham is going to initially explain to us why social impact is an important category for people with disabilities, and then he will announce our finalist. Prior to that, I will let you know that Dylan is playing a tennis tournament in Florida right now, and we've been talking all week, and he's very excited about the awards. And Tim is performing at the National Museum of Australia this afternoon, and we've also been talking all week, and he's also excited about the awards. Over to you, Graham. Well, thanks, Christina, and uh, sorry about the glitch earlier, but uh, we have managed to solve it. Um, the Social Impact Award is critical because it's about communicating with the broader Australian community. We, as people with disabilities, should be part of that community, but we cannot be included with the current negative and limiting views of people with disabilities held by that community. To be included, community attitudes have to change and changing those attitudes is exactly what these uh, finalists and many others are doing. And obviously I won't reintroduce you to the finalists uh, because that's happened. But what I will say is that the recipient of the 2018 Social Impact Award is Jessica Walton. Congratulations, Jessica.
now. Thank you so much. Um, that is, that's amazing. <laughs> Um, so I became disabled when I was nine, um, when I had my left leg amputated um, because of osteosarcoma. Um, and at the time, I didn't proudly identify as disabled. I didn't really understand that disability was an identity. I didn't understand that I'd become part of a, a community and a history um, and, a, and a culture. And I didn't know anything about the disability rights movement. Uh, and I think that's a real shame that when young people acquire a disability, particularly if they're part of a, a community and a family um, where there aren't many disabled people around, um, they, they don't necessarily understand that until they stumble upon that information or they seek it out themselves. And so I think it's really important that, um, that young people are taught in schools to be proud um, of their disability if they are disabled, um, but also that um, non-disabled young people are taught about disability pride so that if they do acquire a disability they know that there is nothing to be ashamed of and in fact they have everything to be um, proud of and excited about. Um, I write for young people and something that I'm very passionate about is increasing disability representation in children's literature. Um, disabled author Corinne Davis started the hashtag own voices and um, it was a way to uplift and celebrate um, disabled writers and authors um, and I think um, it, what it has done is highlight how far we have to go in terms of disability representation in writing and literature. Uh, there's been some some great work done by disabled writers um, but we need to see more own voices um, books and, and works published and um, celebrated and, and read um, and so, you know, in my own life, I'm seeking to write about my experiences as someone who has had cancer and, and who is disabled and lives with chronic pain. Um, so I write poetry and stories about those sorts of things. And every time I read work by other disabled writers, it empowers me, it uplifts me, um, and it reminds me that I'm part of this incredible community. Um, the fact that these awards are online today is really amazing. Um, it's, you know, a way that people can be included and come together as a community online. Uh, and that's something that I've been able to do through Twitter. And it's really being on Twitter that has connected me with my community and with other activists, um, people like Jack Stacky Brown and Carly Finley, um, Alice Wong in the US. Um, and it's through knowing other activists and reading their work that I've really been able to come into my own as a proud disabled person, a disabled writer and activist. So um, thank you to everyone who has helped me learn about who I am and, and where I belong. Um, and thank you so much for this award. It means so much. Um, and I'm very honored to be part of, um, part of these awards. So thank you. Thanks very much, Jessica, and congratulations once again. Thank you. got no audio now, but I think I'm finished. Her wonderful work. Okay, I'm just going to go keep going and say thank you very much, Graham Innes, and I'm glad we got, got on to you eventually. And thank you to Christina for introducing the award. And once again, massive congratulations to Jessica Walton. I just wanted to say a few words about inclusion in this event. The awards started initially as just another awards presentation at an exclusive venue for a small number of people. Using the ingenuity and the innovative qualities of the disability community, this has become a virtual event across many locations. We have been told that there are presenters and finalists who are not able to travel, who have never attended the national awards before. This is their first time. 
There are presenters and finalists who are able to attend because they are not in a crowded, noisy room. There are presenters and finalists who are able to attend because they were able to safely breathe without reactions. And there are presenters and finalists who are able to attend with family, friends and colleagues because it's free to watch. This is a truly inclusive event and I'm very proud to be a part of it. So funnily enough, our next category is inclusion. This category recognises people who have designed processes, systems or programs which illustrate the diversity of disabled people. Oh, sorry, I've lost my uh, document there. Oh, dear. And um, yes, yeah, so it's a great award around inclusion and I've just got full screen on which I don't need. Sorry about that, everyone. Here we go, shouldn't talk about technology, but our presenter for the inclusion category is Damien Griffiths. Damien is the CEO of the First People's Disability Network, which is part of Disabled People Organisations Australia, or DPOA. And the First People's Disability Network does some amazing work. So let's welcome Damien. Hello, good afternoon everyone. Um, welcome speaking to you from Gadigal country, the land of the people of the Gadigal, uh, Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and thanks Aunt for her welcome to country earlier. Um, as the CEO of the First People's Disability Network, it's a great honour to be given this opportunity to present the Inclusion Award. Obviously as an organisation that uh, speaks to the issues of intersectionality, we're very, very happy to be here today. So thank you very much. The 2018 Inclusion Finalist are the LGBTIQ Inclusion Project within the Sexual Lives and Respectful Relationships Program at Deakin University. It was tasked with increasing the inclusion and representation of LGBTIQ people with disability within the SL and RR program, a rights-based program by and for people with intellectual disability operating across New South Wales and Victoria. LGBTIQ people with intellectual disability were recruited and worked to write stories from their lives with a focus on sexuality and relationships. The stories were then used in the existing SL and RR program format, piloted with a group of 10 sexually and gender diverse people with intellectual disability in Melbourne. An independent evaluation of the program by the University of Melbourne reported that the program produced quality and directions of the discussions which covered a remarkably broad spectrum of issues, not only about respectful relationships and sexual lives, but into the broader domain of human rights, the nature of grief, issues of stigmatization and institutional abuse. The SL and RR program now includes additional stories from LGBTIQ people with intellectual disability. Other outcomes have included several participants who are now training to be SLNR are peer educators. This has increased the diversity and capacity of the program to reflect the intersectional nature of people's lives and identities. Our second nomination for the 2018 Inclusion Award goes to someone who, uh, I'm perhaps gonna be biased here, but I have to say I had no part in his nomination or the judging of this award, but my cousin, Scott Avery. Um, uh, Scott's work is breaking new ground and we're very proud of what he's achieved at FPDN and we're looking forward to him doing more and more of this critical work for us over many years. So Scott Avery has been nominated on behalf of Culture is Inclusion. Is the research, Scott is the Research and Policy Director of First People's Disability Network and Scott is currently a PhD candidate at the University of Technology Sydney. Scott recently authored a groundbreaking book called Culture is Inclusion, a narrative of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people with disability, which presented the outcomes of community directed research centered on the concept of yarning. He collected the personal testimony and statistical data on the experiences of indigenous people with disability in Australia, revealed a world of social inequality and injustices that most other Australians have little knowledge about. A key point of the research in the book is that despite appalling disadvantage, Indigenous people with disability continue to challenge their experiences by embracing traditional culture of an inclusive society. Upon hearing he was a finalist, Scott said, as humbling as it is to receive this personal recognition, the true heroes behind our work in promoting inclusion 
uh, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people with disability who gave us their permission to share their stories. With this in mind, I respectfully ask whether the organising panel might consider assigning the nomination to Culture as Inclusion, our book which embodies their stories in recognition that our promotion of inclusion is a product of an entire community. By assigning this nomination to Culture as Inclusion, people with disability in Aboriginal communities can share in this nomination and feel ownership and pride in which they are accomplishing through this work. So it gives me great pleasure to announce the recipient, recipient of the 2018 Inclusion Award is the SLNR LGBTIQ Project. Congratulations. <laughs> and uh, I'm calling on Linda Stokey to say a few words. Hello everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Uh, I'm not Linda Stokey, I wish I was. Um, my name is Amy O'Shea and I'm, I'm here representing Linda who's unable to make it at the last minute. Uh, I'm also representing Emma Davis Arthur and Emma, along with Linda, is a peer educator on the Sexual Lives Respectful Relationships program and was part of the, the training team who delivered the LGBTIQ program. Um, well, <laughs> thank you very much. What, a, what an honour. Um, congratulations, first of all, to Scott Avery and just the excellent resource that you've produced. I so look forward to getting deeply into it because um, I think we, rather than being in competition, are in shared value of bringing increased um, inclusivity and intersectionality to this field in which we work. So um, very pleased to be up there with him and the quality of his work. I, I think that our project is a great example of the fact that you don't need a lot of money if you're going to do something good. What you need is great people and we had those. Um, in particular, we had those with the peer educators we worked alongside, but also the financial support we received from GALFA, the Gay and Lesbian Foundation of Australia, and our partnership with Inclusion Melbourne and the Rainbow Rights Self-Advocacy Group. Uh, thank you, Christina and the Disability Leadership Institute um, for your recognition of this work and, and Damien for your introduction as well and the chance to hear from the First People's Disability Network. Um, like Auntie Di said, we're no longer going to be invisible, we're no longer going to be pushed aside because the queers are here. We, as an organisation at Sexual Lives and Respectful Relationships at Deakin, we are committed to seeing more and more LGBTIQ inclusion in this disability space, particularly for people by, with intellectual disability, and we're going to keep working in this area in the future. So thank you very much. Great, thank you. Back down to Melbourne, I think. Cheers. This is a uh, LGBTIQ project, a project which is close to my heart as I'm an LGBTIQ person myself. And I think we have missed the start of that. So just once again, thank you to Damien for introducing that and congratulations. Oh my God. What's Patsy saying? We didn't work. Oh, good, we did. Oh. Okay. So I've muted and turned off the video. Congratulations. Okay, good. So they heard it. I was like talking, and I didn't, I didn't know. I was like, "Can they hear me?" I'll just be talking in silence. <laughs> I don't know. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah, that's, <gasps> that's fantastic. Oh. So exciting. Good for this. It's really cheap. I think I wasn't here anyway. Uh, that's, I think we're back to me now. So I don't know if anyone heard any of that, but very briefly, thank you, Damien Griffiths, and congratulations to the Sexual Lives and Respectful Relationships LGBTI project. Um, so now I think we've got one of our arts finalists videos. Hello, I'm Kieran Estamel. I'm a Play School presenter. I grew up in Sydney. I have always had a dog. I love the beach and I love dancing. So you can probably tell that I'm way shorter than lots of the other presenters on the show. 
And that's because I've got a type of dwarfism, which means I just didn't grow very tall. So if you were going to talk about it, I like you to say Kirana is a person of short stature or Kirana is a person with dwarfism. Um, but really, what would be awesome is just if you learnt to say my name, Kirana. I loved play school when I was a kid. I watched it all the time and I'd always get up and dance and sing and talk to the TV screen and it was one of the most cool things to be a part of and now I'm actually doing it in real life. It's so awesome. I don't think I have a favourite play school toy because I sometimes find I get worried the other toys will get a bit jealous, you know. So I think I like all of the toys equally. I feel like I have won a really cool prize to be on play school and also it feels really fun because you get to play and all of the co-hosts are really fun, lovely people. So I come to work and I get to have a really good time. See you on play school! Yes, thank you to Kieran Estable, one of our arts finalists. Now getting on to a more reflective part of this ceremony, so we'd like to pause for a moment to remember the many wonderful and committed people we've actually lost during this past year. The disability community, sorry, that's really a bad place for it to do that, isn't it? I do apologise. Sorry, that was a technical issue that removed my words. I will start my words again because they're very meaningful and solemn and words that we need to listen to. So this is a more reflective part of the ceremony. We'd like to pause for a moment to remember the many wonderful and committed people that we've lost in the past year. The disability community loses far too many people far too early. Many have made significant contributions to the status of disabled people and advanced our rights over many, many years. We'd particularly like to acknowledge Dr Margaret Cooper who died recently following an accident. Margaret was a founder member of Women with Disabilities Australia and their inaugural president. Thank you. And there's actually a video on its way. There we go. Maybe because when people look at me, they see their own fragility, their own death. They see the day when all our bodies are so weakened by the battles inside us, the pollutions that pass through us, that we can barely drag ourselves along the floor. Or maybe he imagines were he in my position, he would be so embarrassed that he would need to hide. Because we all grew up in a world that told us, I don't know how I would cope if I were you. I am here to be seen in all our fierceness and fragility. I do not need to be strong or brave or courageous. I can be glorious without permission. Pam McCormick, who's a finalist in the arts category. Our next category is innovation. This category recognises being innovative. 
thinking outside the box, developing new systems, technology or tools to achieve outcomes in the status of disabled people. Our presenter for this innovation category is Christina Ryan, who we saw before. Christina is the CEO of the Disability Leadership Institute and has an extensive background in community sector management and governance. She has also represented Australia at the United Nations, focusing on the rights of women with disabilities. Christina lives in Canberra, where I do too, so welcome Christina. Thanks so much, Jeanette, and uh, thanks um, indeed for a sterling job so far. Um, we're doing our bit here behind the scenes. Innovation's a category in this award, um, and it's a really important thing for the disability community. A study published in the Harvard Business Review last December showed that people with disabilities are 10% more innovative in the workplace than their colleagues. People with disabilities do things differently. We have to. We are the masters of the work around of finding another way to make something happen, of getting things done somehow, because we have to be. We are familiar with operating in environments that are inherently hostile and aren't made to suit us. And this gives us strong lateral thinking and problem solving abilities that should be the envy of everybody. The innovation category recognises this extraordinary talent for getting things done somehow. Our innovation finalists are Donna Purcell, Donna works at the Commonwealth Bank of Australia and sits on several boards. Donna regularly presents at diversity and inclusion events, sharing her industry knowledge and experience and using her own lived experience as a person with disability to share through storytelling to open people's minds and demonstrate what is possible. She established the Commonwealth Bank Disability Employee Network, Enable, has led the development and implementation of CBA's Accessibility and Inclusion Plan, and advocates for policy and practical change. Donna is not afraid of speaking up and challenging people when the Commonwealth Bank doesn't get it right. Donna proactively identifies areas for improvement and works to build accessibility into standard policy and practice. She is proud to have a disability and openly shares her lived experience, challenges and successes to motivate others. Donna's colleagues say, she genuinely inspires us all to do better and to think differently. Congratulations, Donna. Eva Siffus has launched successfully a three-part training program, as well as a comprehensive web page to assist people who have experience of brain injury. This inclusive training program has been tailor-made for people with cognitive disabilities, their family support people, and for people who work in this field. By Accident is a new and innovative approach that collaboratively supports the outcomes of everybody involved. Using her own experience of acquired brain injury, skills in performance arts, and her passion, Eva's leadership in empowering people in their own transformation is inspirational. It fills a void in supports available for people living with cognitive difficulties, their families and informal supports, while strengthening understanding, communication and pathways forward. Congratulations, Eva. The Client Voice Project Group, made up of David Cook, Nathan Clark, Jessica Parson, Emma Simpson, Tony Sheedy, Thomas Norwood and Eva Siffus, who you've just met, with their experience of varying levels of trauma or disability following road accidents, a passionate and dedicated team of clients are helping transform the services provided by the Victorian Accident Transport Accident Commission, the TAC. For most of the year, eight clients have worked together with TAC staff to co-design and develop the client voice framework. Their commitment and creativity will raise the voice of clients embedded into the TAC's work and be a model for the broader community. The project team has used design tools to think outside the box and at a level exceeding their experience to pioneer the direction of the future for all TAC clients. And they have tackled complex issues such as payment, prioritisation of future work at the TAC and making it relevant to the community. All clients that commenced in the group attended every month from February to November and committed to additional tasks as required by the project. For example, pre-session work, attending leadership meetings and reviewing documents. 
several clients participated in additional pilot-based activities that contributed to the depth and richness of the learnings from the project, presenting various stages of the project progress to the TAC executive team and forming part of the TAC recruitment panel. Congratulations, Client Voice Project team. Jade Strongman is passionate about building more inclusive communities and society for all. As part of a uniting local area coordination initiative for leadership and project stakeholders, Jade has attended training to learn about applying human-centered design into customer service delivery, an approach to assist organizations to understand more about their customer's journey and experiences. Jade creatively identifies solutions and has applied the skills and tools he gained attending the Human Centred Design Training to develop and lead a series of workshops across the five uniting local area coordination districts designed to help NDIS participants to self-manage their NDIS funding. Jade identified a gap and need for NDIS participants to receive more simplified information associated with the NDIS self-management funding option and developed a step-by-step -step tool to guide participants on their NDIS journey. This initiative has helped to build the capacity of NDIS participants to have more choice and control over their NDIS funding. Acknowledging the access and time barriers many participants face attending workshops, Jade is now leading the project team to develop the content as a webinar series. Jade is constantly looking for innovative approaches to advocate for people with disability and influence change in society, including developing other digital content for both NDIS participants and others in the community. Congratulations, Jade. We did have a technical glitch with Jade a little bit earlier, and I fear I may have thrown him out of the webinar, for which I apologise profusely. The recipient of the 2018 Innovation Award is the Client Voice Project Group. Woo! Congratulations to the TAC Client Group. Woo! They'll now say a few words. You get to make a short speech, guys. Off you go. Go now. Oh, that's amazing! Can't believe it. Uh, to be um, to be even nominated is a huge privilege, uh, and amazing nominations all around and award winners so far. Um, the work with the TAC this year has been something I've never seen before, never been a part of before. Their business, their business ethic, and their business uh, looking into the future and what they want to achieve has just been nothing I've seen and. We've uh, really been privileged, the team, uh, the clients, to be a part of um, in, into the future. It's just going to make a huge difference with uh, people that have road accidents. Um, I'd also like to thank the, uh, the rest of the TAC team, with Nadia Kettle, as the main driver of the program, and the rest of the team around us. They've just been so welcoming and just been amazing and I yeah, really can't believe that we had the privilege to be nominated and to take it away and also, sorry Eva, I'm sure you'll win another one. <laughs> <laughs> See, Eva got bumped out, apologies for that too. Yeah. Well done, thanks guys. Congratulations to the Client Voice Project Group. Woo. <laughs> Back to you, Jeanette. Thank you. Now we've got a video. Finalists in the art. Thank you. All right, I was broken. He snapped on front. 
my hip hit the bottom of the car and my legs swung up, swung back, swung around me and came to rest near the windscreen of the car. Of course, I can't remember any of this, so I could be making it all up. and my head was over the edge of the bonnet. When he slammed his foot on the brake, he went flying off the car and smacked my head into the road. Again, it's a finalist in the arts category, so thank you for that video. Our next category is change making. This category recognising achieves, recognises achieving lasting change to the status quo, such as through policy programs and legislation, which results in greater equality for disabled people. This is a very important area. Our presenter for the change making category is Frank Hall Bentick. Frank has a lifelong disability and through his outstanding efforts has contributed to improving human rights for people with a disability. He has worked closely with the United Nations in Bangkok as resource person and invited expert and has been an active member of the International Disability Caucus and the International Disability Alliance CRPD Forum. Welcome Frank. I'm sorry, Jeanette, is Frank there with you at the Melbourne Town Hall? Because we don't have him on our, uh, our list. I have to get the, uh, the AV people to come along and do that. Um, so do we think we should have another category while that's happening? Can, can he come and use your microphone? Thank you. Microphone. We'll have to move the laptop down as the issue. He hasn't logged into the webinar. We don't have his laptop inside the webinar, so he'll need to come and use your laptop. Thank you. I, I'd have to talk to the AV people because I don't know with all the connections. Sorry, everyone. We're just getting this one sorted. There's just a matter of connections, but hopefully we'll be um, sorted very, very soon. Apologise for this one. The AV guy is just turning up now. Sincere apologies. It will okay. be fixed shortly. I'll, thank move, you I'll move to another video. Just a moment. Oh, thank you. Yeah, can yeah. they go through? We need them to visuals as well, though. Yeah. It's just it's connected to stuff, and I don't know what that box. I don't know what all that is. That's all right. Okay. Yeah, and I decided to do that because I've never really done it. So I ended up working with um, this amazing performer with an African background, grew up in the UK, now lives in Sweden and works with, oh, something, I can't remember the name of her theatre company, but um, it's mainly with deaf performers. And she got us to do, she'd written this poem that was a very sort of powerful poem and we were working in Swedish, French, Mexican, an American sign language, sort of like a sign language choir. So right. there's about sort of 20 of us on that poem and we each got a different part of the poem. So I learned to do this, check this, this is the Swedish, Swedish sign for lightning goes like this. Like that. I thought that was great. Anyway, so we get to, and so, sort of about being sailors lost at sea and the storms coming and storming. Swedish sign language was this thing that was like this and it got really big and la la. And it was just fabulous to work yeah. with this group of people doing stuff I had no idea really and having to like catch, get it really quickly so we could all perform. That was totally mm -hmm. tops. Good. And um,
Uh, okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, uh, apologies for the slight delay. Um, this change banking category is very important, particularly in uh, challenging the status quo and uh, getting a better result for people with disabilities to uh, be integrated into society. Change making finals are Amanda Laurie Jones. Amanda has worked in local government uh, for the Victorian State Government and the National Australia Bank in inclusion and diversity, as well as having her own diversity at disability inclusion consultancy business. Amanda's passion and commitment is to create action for access. To enable her customers to progress their access and inclusion journey by developing strategies, policies, and processes to include people with disabilities from a customer, community, and employee perspective. Amanda's work it values the, and promotes the social model of disability and supports organisations to improve outcomes and increase participation of people with disabilities. Amanda and her team of facilitators are all people with disabilities. And uh, in order to influence the authenticity and effective and affect meaningful change. Amanda is passionate about embedding policies and processes within the organisation uh, that enable an inclusive environment for employees, customers and community members with disabilities. The next uh, social change finalist is Christine Smith. Christine is the owner of the Great Ocean States, an accommodation business in Ocean Grove, Victoria. It is distinguished by its industry leading accommodation accessible stays, which provide exceptional facilities and service to clients, inclusive of all levels of mobility and ability. The business is not a disability specific, but operates as a mainstream tourism service, which is fully inclusive. Chris employs people with disabilities and provides a service for people with disabilities. At a time of increasing competition from engaging, sorry, emerging booking services, Chris was able to translate the deficiency in disability services into a market opportunity by creating innovation, well-designed purpose services, accommodation and a booking service which links accessible tourism products to create an overall holiday experience. Chris realised that people with disabilities have been misinformed for a long time to, in respect to what is advertised online as being accessible. She has pursued relentlessly advocacy on social media and mainstream media, resulting in her becoming a regional accessibility tourism specialist about the, the reality of accessible holiday homes. The next uh, finalist is Anthony Mulholland. Anthony is a leader and advocate, making sure people with intellectual disability are heard and included. He is an Aboriginal man with an intellectual disability and an NDIS participant who lives independently in Western Sydney. Anthony is passionate about inclusion rights and accessible transport. Anthony believes that people with disabilities 
should have a voice and be listened to. Anthony has worked with the Penrith Council to have accessible adult change rooms built at the local shopping centre and advised on upgrades to Penrith train station and bus stops and many other social inclusion works in Penrith. Anthony continues to be at, Anthony consulted on major infrastructure works which have led to significant improvements to accessibility across the New South Wales transport network. He is an active participant in the Don't Silence Us campaign and featured a video in which was viewed by, uh, viewed 40,000 times on Facebook. Anthony recently read, led the campaign to stop the New South Wales government cutting essential phone services on transport information line. This resulted in the Minister for Transport announcing the services will remain for people with disabilities. Anthony presented to the inquiry on the implementation of the NDIS, which was described by the chair of the committee as a very strong and, a very strong and clear and has provided valuable supplemental uh, to the information that came to us via your submissions. By telling his story and sharing his ideas, Anthony is helping others in, with intellectual disability speak up, access support and live good lives. The next uh, uh, finalist is uh, Deaf Children Australia, Deaf Hood Youth Parliament Network. With Miranda, uh, Miranda Reardon, Nicholas Steer, Oliver Beasley, Kate Dunn, T. Ratto Williams and Sarah Weir, who were part of the YMCA Victorian Youth Parliament Week at Parliament House in July 2017. The Deaf Hood team presented their bill in Iceland and argued for the need for public transport around Victoria to be deaf friendly. The aim of the bill was to make change around public transport uh, more, more deaf friendly and visible. Also arguing for this visual captioning on buses and trams to become oh, for upcoming stops. The bill passed and was approved in Parliament House. The team went on to build a good relationship with our Public Transport Commissioner. Uh, we're invited to meet the Commission and have been involved in several changes to make public transport more accessible in Victoria. The Deaf Hood team has helped achieve greater accessibility and equality for public transport. Having a deaf team participating in the youth parliament also highlighted the importance of accessibility and inclusion in parliament. And I'm very proud to uh, um, announce the recipient of the 2018 Change Making Award is Anthony Mulholland. Congratulations, Anthony. No, I can't hear him yet. I can barely hear her. I can't hear her at all. Would you like to say a few words, Anthony? You get to make a speech now. Um, thank you so much for the other finalists. What a wonderful honour. It is all my, mine is about including people with disability in their everyday lives. I feel the change has been, the change making has been a very difficult one because it's not easy changing lives for people with disability. 
but the wonderful changes I've seen with the community attitude, attitude of government and attitude of other people to make a change has been wonderful. And the under, other participants have done wonderful changes in their lives to make people with disability feel more inclusive with the changes. I know it's not easy changing attitude, but we can try our best we can. And I'm very proud of the changes I've made. <laughs> Thank you very much, Frank Hall Bantuk. Congratulations once again to Anthony Mulholland for your award and for your great work. I think we have um, an arts category video to follow very shortly. A video, but we have something almost as good, or probably as good, which is the award for our next category, which is the arts. So this category recognises using artistic expression to advance the status of disabled people. And I've been a practising artist myself for many years and have a great respect for what can be gained through creative practice. Our presenter for the arts category is Margarita Coppolino. Margaret is the current president of the National Ethnic Disability Alliance, or NEDA, the previous chair of Arts Access of Victoria and the Australian Feder Federation of Disability Organisations. So welcome, Margarita. Marita very soon with the arts category. It's, um, it's a great award so far. People have had wonderful things. And here's Christina. Here's Christina again. Sorry, folks. We are finding Margarita for us. We can't locate her, even though we know she's here somewhere. So um, we have a number of arts finalists, and this is a rather exciting category. Um, OK, we've located Margarita, so we'll just bump her up if you'll bear with me for a moment. Hello, anyone there? Are you there? We can't see you, Margarita. We'd like to see you as well, thanks. Yeah, click on that one, click on that. Unmute it, unmute it. You there? Are you there, Christina? We can't see you, Margarita, so I'm just going to keep going until we can actually see you, okay? Can we ask Claire to start the, com the camera on her video, please? Okay. 
So we have a number of finalists in the arts category while we just wait for Claire to get her camera up and running. The first of our finalists in the arts category is Eva Siffus. Eva's having a big day today. Eva is described as a born performer. She sustained a severe brain injury in a road accident, which brought her plans for stardom internationally to a halt. This is where Eva began her biggest gig yet, her new life. Eva delved into disability arts, which became her new focus. Eva has been employed at Arts Access South Australia. She progressed from assisting at expression workshops for people with profound disabilities to producing her own series of circus skills workshops for integrated classes of disabled and non-disabled primary school students. Called Roll Up, Roll Up, played during the International Youth Festival in Adelaide, come out in 2009, where it and Eva moved to Melbourne, becoming Associate Director of the Other Arts Film Festival, 2012. Eva now manages the scholarship programs at Arts Access Victoria from where she is coming to us today. And Eva wants to make a difference and art is her mode of transportation to arts exploration. We can now see Margarita, so I'll hand over to her. Thanks very much for bearing with us. Uh, thank you very much, Christina. Sorry about that, just a few technical issues. Uh, so the second nomination is Sarah uh, is a leader in the Australian arts uh, movement, innovating and creating world-renowned art work that challenges and questions the world. Sarah is a self-described freak show performer with deep understanding of what accessibility actually means. Her performance, Cuckoo the, the Bear Girl, is a story based on the history of a sideshow using circus skills to explore the disability history. She spoke about disability arts history at the Sydney Opera House, Villa, the Festival of Dangerous Ideas in 2016. Sarah's art challenges stereotypes of disability and of our history to reclaim old ideas and see them with fresh eyes that include the disability perspectives. Sarah has an international career and is a role model for others. She engages with professional performance on work, on stage, on screen, and undertakes accessibility consultancy in the arts. Sarah has shown leadership through consistently working at a professional level in Australia and abroad, in both independent work and company work, stage and screen. She creates work for the disability community and general public and is an excellent sp uh, spokesperson in the arts. So is she, her, in the queer community from Coal Community, Dutch. And next nominee, there's so many great nominees. It's gonna be really hard to, would have been really hard for the actual judges. Karita is an actor who recently started as a play school presenter on ABC TV. She says that it's important to understand that all bodies can tell all kinds of stories. It isn't just the enabled non-disabled actors who have a right to be on our stage and screen. We all have limited tales to tell. We all deserve to access art and be part of our society and culture. She started acting in Bath, Lufthansa, Marshall, with the character created, especially after her being cast as an extra. After finding Australia less open to casting actors with disability, she moved to England, where she starred in EastEnders, The Rick and Donut, Economy, Too Short, the uh, Jeffrey Rush movie, The Best Offer, and free production of the London Physics, London, her favourite metaphors of the moment compares apples with apples. I look at the disability body now and I see it almost like organic apples versus highly polished wax shiny apples that get you to buy it, but it doesn't have quite the richness of taste, but looks gorgeous and almost there to mock the existence of the apple in the first place. Rather than the disabled body being freakish, circuit and circuit, 
which is Christians. I was brought up in seeing the body as organic and naturally occurs. Next nominee, Kath Duncans. Kath is a writer, an activist, a writer with many decades of feminists and disability pride under her belt. Together with Quipping Disability Unleashed team, she co-found. Kate took over the Melbourne Hospital within, in December 2017 with Rookie Business, a cabaret show, game show with tattoos, Minister of and Tang Da. Quipping is a Melbourne-based arts group featuring a range of queer disabled people performing, challenging, and highly regarded as an arts performance. Kate knows that access effectively change, positive change. Quipping and performance have gone on to work with other companies and Quipping has branched out into other venues and produced more than 20 shows in engage and 50 with 58 performances. Auslan interpreters, diverse mixed abilities, crews and over a thousand audience members. The next nominee is Hannah Paul, who we saw a video earlier. It's an artist who's worked in physical, theatre, dance, circus, and interdisciplinary arts over, over 20 years in Australia and overseas. When she became disabled, she moved back to Australia and stopped practicing for three years. It was a big deal for her to begin her work again, the form and progress to create had changed in time, and she was no longer able to do the sort of things that she used to. She discovered firsthand, like a visitor coming to a new place for the first time, what it was like to live with a disability. Which to say, all social and political barriers, disabled people are oppressed by. A writer's outrage and search for justice began to fuel her art. And she began to create and form again radical vision. Became a weapon against intelligent messages and ableism that our culture soaked. Yeah. It is said that restrictions are a gift to creativity, and though her new form of work may not have physical to them, her previous creation, it has developed something more intimate, more personal, and significantly more meaningful. Hannah's work, first major work as a disabled artist, was form, performed in the art piece The Mermaid, which debuted at the Art Not a Park Festival in Canberra in May, March 2018. So, great nominees. Um, I wish all the nominees could be the recipients. I couldn't think of a better location to present the the actual awards here at Arts Access Victoria. Thank you, Arts Access Victoria, for allowing the viewing. So the recipients for the art category, Disability Awards, is Sarah. Congratulations, Sarah. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Oh. Hello. Yeah. You there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. So would you like to say a few words, Sarah? And where you are at the moment? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm I'm in New York. It's a Sunday night and I'm thrilled and thank you so much. Um you know, all the finalists are absolutely amazing and the contribution of every artist with disability in Australia is absolutely legendary and and worthy of respect and recognition. Um, but I'm really honored to accept this award and I just think the arts is really important for social change and for, you know, um, supporting a cultural community that is disability. So I'm, I'm really honored. Thank you so, so very much. Congratulations, sir. And we'll see you when you get back. Well done, everybody. <laughs> yes, definitely. I wanna see everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ciao.
Margarita Coppolini and congratulations to Sarah. Um, Sarah, wonderful artist, well done, it's great, lovely to see. So our next category is rights activism. This category recognises human, using human rights mechanisms, including implementing the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities to um, promote the rights of disabled people. Than to marry oh. to Paris man. Thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself then. Is it likely thou who will to undertake? A thing like death to shine away the same bow. And if thou darest, I'll give thee remedy. It's just a matter of faith. Hold and go, home now, be merry, give consent. To marry Paris, a Wednesday is tomorrow night. Take thou this fire, this is still the liquid dream thou of. No warmth, no breath, shall testify thy life. The rose is in thy lips, and she shall fade away. To pile the ashes, thy eyes, windows fall. Like that, when he shuts up, shuts up the day of life. Each part deprived of supper government, it's just a matter of faith. It's just a matter of faith. It's just a matter of knowing that we've got the faith. It's just a matter of faith. It's just a matter of Hi, thank you to Sarah for that awesome video and well done for your award. Our next category is rights activism. This category recognises using human rights mechanisms, including implementing the Convention of the Rights of Persons with Disabilities to advance the status of disabled people. So our presenter for the rights activism category is a very suitable person for this category because it's Alastair McEwen, who's the Disability Discrimination Commissioner. Welcome, Alastair. It is my great pleasure to present the award for the Rights Activism category. As humans, we have rights. We are born with these rights and they cannot be taken away. Sadly, however, Every day we see breaches of human rights, including for people with disability. This award recognises those who worked to ensure that the rights and voices of people with disability are recognised and included in our society. The three rights activism finalists are Judy Hewitt. Judy Hewitt is a leading advocate for people with intellectual disability working from Tasmania. She is a member of the NDIS Independent Advisory Council, making sure the voice of people with intellectual disability has a seat at the table. In 2010, Judy attended the Inclusion International Conference in Berlin and went to London to speak with self-advocates from England. Three years later, she went to Geneva and spoke to the United Nations. 
about the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, about the closure of institutions. She says that my main aim is to teach the up and coming youth, young advocates about self-advocacy and the great attitude we have here in Tasmania towards people with disabilities and how they can become like me. Judy was one of the first delegation of self-advocates to Parliament House, Canberra, to lobby for the NDIS. Our second finalist is Robert Strike. Robert is the president and co-founder of Self Advocacy Sydney, which formed in 1986. The organisation supports people with intellectual disability by helping develop their skills and confidence and make them aware of their rights and responsibilities in the community. Robert has participated in the most recent United Nations meetings on the CRPD, Conference of States Parties, to advocate for the rights and inclusion of people with intellectual disability, particularly in being able to access information. He has not only strongly argued for easy read material available at all UNCRPD meetings. He has turned UN agendas and key documents for these meetings into easy read. These documents were distributed by the UN to participants at the meeting so that people with actual disability could participate. Robert also organised the first forum led by people with intellectual disability on inclusion of people with intellectual disability and did this with other prominent self-advocates from all around the world. Robert says, I got sick of people telling people with a disability that they can't do things for themselves. Robert lived in an institution, worked in supported employment, and went to a segregated school. He advocates fiercely for the rights of people with disability to be able to live, work, and love in the community, including becoming parents. Our third finalist, is Rosemary Kays. Rosemary is an internationally respected lawyer, academic and researcher specialising in discrimination and human rights law. In June this year, Rosemary was elected as the Australian representative to the UN Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disability for the 2019-2022 term. In the years 2004 to 2006, Rosemary was appointed to the Australian Government delegation responsible for drafting the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. In particular, Rosemary coordinated the working group at the UN that finalised the text for CRPD Article 24, Education, which required significant negotiation to work through differing views from people with disability and their representative organisations. In 2018, the Australian government ratified the convention, thus providing a firm platform for social inclusion of people with disability in all aspects of Australian society. Rosemary has mentored and supported people with disability, particularly young people, 
and emerging art leaders with disability to engage in international human rights mechanisms, including assisting in leading delegations of people with disability to the Conference of States Parties to the CRPD. To the UN Review of Australia under the CRPD and other international fora. Rosemary has dedicated her career to advocating for human rights, disability policy and reform. And the recipient of the 2018 Rights Activism Award is Rosemary Case. Congratulations, Rosemary. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm um, really quite shocked. Uh, Judy and Robert, I have worked very, very closely with over the years and they are just such outstanding activists. But um, I was quite prepared to sit here and celebrate um, oh. their achievement and they are well-deserved finalists. Um, very well deserved finalists. And I um, truly appreciate the award. I appreciate the inclusivity of uh, this particular event. I, um, I am a bit taken back. But the one thing I would like to say that everybody that's out there, all the work that you do makes my work a lot easier. Um, I'm actually really quite lucky that I get to be the person that looks at all your hard work and try and translate it into meaningful stuff at the international level. But without what you guys do on the ground, all that fabulous activism, all that wonderful advocacy, I have nothing to work with. So really, um, Thank you for all that you do and thank you for disability leadership for uh, the award. I, award. I truly appreciate it. Congratulations, Rosemary. Congratulations, Rosemary. Alistair McEwen and congratulations once again to Rosemary Kays. Our final award is the Leslie Hall Award for Lifetime Achievement. Before we introduce our presenter and finalists, I'd like to introduce, introduce Frank Hall Bantic once again to tell us a little bit about his sister Leslie Hall. And Some wonderful help from all sorts of good people. Okay, um, thanks for uh, uh, being able to uh, say a little bit about Leslie. Um, it's with great honour I introduced this award in Leslie's name. Leslie was born in 1954 in a small coastal town in Victoria. She passed away in 2013 to the great shock of the Australian and international disability communities. Leslie was a fierce feminist and disability activist. 
She had a lifelong disability and her early education was dominated by long periods of hospitalisation and special schooling. She completed, completed her teaching degree in 1976. In 1981, she was a key founding member of the Disability Resources Centre and the Women with Disabilities Feminist Collective, both of which fought against beauty quests and the institutional status quo dominated by charity service providers. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, she worked with a number of disability advocacy organisations, including the Disability Resources Centre, Reinforce, Action on Community Living, and as Project Officer for the Disability Section at the UN ASCAP in Bangkok. Leslie was a feminist activist at numerous international disability conferences in the Bahamas, Korea, Fiji, South Africa, India, Vanuatu, Geneva, and Bangkok. In 2008, she was employed in as CEO of the Australian Federation of Disability Organisations, where she brought together, brought her experience, skills, and long commitment to human rights for women, people with disabilities, and Indigenous people to the national and international work of AFTO. She brought together service providers, carers, politicians, and people with disabilities to bring about the NDIS. Leslie was truly an exceptional woman. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Frank. I'll just get set up again here. There we go, bright green earbuds, very important. Um, okay. So, yes, thank you so much um, to Frank Hall Bentick for that fantastic introduction to our final award. So the Leslie Hall Award for Lifetime Achievement is awarded to an individual who's shown commitment to disability rights movement and worked over time to achieve significant outcomes for disabled people. Our presenter for the Leslie Hall Award for Lifetime Achievement today is Sue Salthouse. Sue has led a range of community sector organisations which focus on improving the lives of people with disabilities through addressing policies and programs across all facets of the community. She was, Sue was the 2017 winner of the Leslie Hall Leadership Award herself. So welcome, very warm welcome to Sue. Thank you, Jeanette. And we're coming to you from the land of the Ngunnawal and the Ngambri people in Canberra. And um, I would like to say that this award is extremely important. And so that um, the people who are nominees for this award have seen some things in common, even though the styles of leadership are extremely different. Uh, they bring together all of them. They have a degree of resilience. They're very supportive of the people around them. They have longevity in that they have been, been working on this all their lives. Um, and they have an understanding of the rights basis that underpin the work that we do. All of them are incredible role models they bring others on this journey and they, um, the effect of their advocacy is wide ranging. They show the importance of having a seat at the table and they innovate, innovate us with disability pride. Leslie Hall embodied all of these characteristics. And these people, they are, I have got quite a list of people who were the nominees in this section and who are indeed all acknowledged for their work that they have done. So the first um, person that I'd like to tell you about is Janice Slattery. Janice has been a tireless and committed advocate for and with people with an intellectual disability for over 30 years. She was a founding member and volunteer 
of reinforced self-advocacy and she was a member of a, a group that started peer education for women's health in Victoria. Auntie Gail Rankin is a um, Naringiri woman born in, the, in Rokan on Lake Alexandrina in South Australia. She's been at the forefront of the development of the social movement of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders and participated in the inaugural gathering at Alice Springs in 1999. She's been a leading figure in the South Australian Government's Aboriginal Advisory Committee on Disability. It's important to note that she was the inaugural chair of the First Peoples Disability Network and remains in that position. Tony Vidaro is an outstanding leader and individual who's committed his life to supporting the disability rights movement and to advocating that the voice of the disabled person can be heard and recognised. Eva Siffis, we have seen before, but she epitomises a lifetime of achievement in the arts, impacting many people's lives, including her own. Eva is a respectful leader and has been employed at Arts Access South Australia and now Arts Access Victoria, where she manages the scholarship program. And this includes the Leslie Hall Scholarship Program. Jane Rosengrave is a proud Yorta Yorta woman with intellectual disability. She's a passionate and committed human rights advocate who's provided a strong voice for people with disabilities and particularly women with disability and first peoples with disability. Matthew Bowden has been an outstanding leader for over two decades highlighting intersections that are often excluded or marginalised. His work with people with disability in prison, in institutions, LGBTIQ plus people with disability, has always been founded in integrity and a commitment to disability rights. Di McGowan has worked for over 20 years to advance the standing of women with disabilities in Australia. Di started in advocacy volunteering for the women's, with the Women's Network within Disabled Peoples International, which is now WIDA, and then worked for WIDA while the office was in Canberra. Di has been a part of WID Act since 1995, and she uses her lived experience to advocate for the NDIS, health and wellbeing, workplace inclusion, and very much more. So with that incredible lineup of people who have worked in the disability sector for a long, long time, it gives me great pleasure to announce the winner as Janice Slattery. My sincere congratulations to Janice as an incredible leader. I would like to thank, thank you to the organisers of these awards and congratulations to the other finalists. I have enjoyed my time working in many projects over the years. If I've listed all the jobs, I will be here for a long time, but I would like to thank a few people. The Office of the Public Advocate for including me in an independent third persons program in 2005, Leslie Hall and the team from APTO for opportunity to work with them for 2009 and 2011, and Women's Health Dress in Footscray 
from 1994. And to Patsy Foley for all the work we have done over the years and all the travelling with Living Saver Sexual Lives. I was just happy to be a part of the team. Also, thank you to Kelly Johnson and, and Linda Stogo for nominating me. And lastly, thank you to my family for all your support. Thank you very much to Sue Salthouse for introducing that award and huge congratulations once again to Janice Slattery. Now that, believe it or not, is our final award for 2018. We're almost done. Thank you to everyone involved, to everyone involved in organising this event, making it fantastic as it has been. And finally, just to recognise the amazing recipients of those awards once more, Jessica Walton, the Sexual Lives and, um, sorry, I just went full screen. I'll try again. There we go. Apologies. The technology has not been my friend today, but I think we've worked with it and I think it's been good. So I'll just finally thank and, and acknowledge all those amazing recipients once more. Jessica Walton, the Sexual Lives and Respectful Part Relationships LGBTIQ Project, the Client, Bro Client Voice Project Group, Anthony Mulholland, Sarah Herbolt, Rosemary Case and Janice Slattery. Well done to all the recipients and to everyone else who was nominated. And we look forward to seeing you all next year. So I hope you had a great time. I hope you enjoyed celebrating the awards because I know I have. This has been a highlight of my 2018. It's fantastic. I don't want to forget, and don't forget that this webcast will be available fully captioned on the Disability Leadership Institute YouTube channel. So you can watch it again and show your friends if you want to. I hope the rest of your International Day for People with Disability Monday is filled with very good things and we'll see you at the next one. Oh. <laughs>